Now, we have had no curiosity from the media, which six weeks ago told us mm. that Joe Biden was fine, three weeks ago started to ask <laughs> questions, and now tells us that Kamala Harris is the bee's knees and absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Everyone should get behind her. What do you make of the willful blindness that people have about this really untransparent and undemocratic behavior of the left? Well, the first thing I'd say is it's as predictable as it is uh, the night following day. Um, I mean, in fact, Rita and I spoke about it during the week on her show about how within days we would see Carmella being the darling of the left and the darling of the media. And, of course, that's exactly what's happened. You know, we've seen a complete quantum shift in, in, uh, in her appearance. Um, and so, look, I, I think this is, this is intriguing in the sense that what it's done is actually thrown 14 million votes of Democrat primary voters out the window and... It's extraordinary. I mean, we've had Joe go right up to the wire. Everybody in the White House would have known there was a problem many, many months, if not years, prior to getting to this point. Um, and yet they're pointing the finger at Donald Trump for being a threat to democracy, even though we've got the benefit of four years of Donald Trump's uh, presidency in the White House to prove that actually that's nonsense. So, I, I mean, I think we're going to see this now shift into action. The media will be willfully blind mm -hmm. to some of the flaws and problems of, uh, of Carmela Harris. And we see it across all boards. By the way, when January 6 happened in the United States, we knew everything about every single person they were investigating, their mother, their cat, anyone that walked <laughs> yeah. in a, a kilometre <laughs> radius of the Capitol on that day. We don't know anything about the bloke that shot at Donald, uh, Donald Trump. There's, there's yep. no news about him at all. Uh, and, in fact, that whole incident has just been swept under the rug. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it's a fallacy. It's a, it's a, it's a joke. <laughs> It is, absolutely, and that's why trust in the FBI and in uh, those uh, bodies is at record lows in the US because we know they've got into his devices. They would have some idea about his ideology, his background. There's been nothing shared, nothing's leaked, nothing. Um, oh, except he was a Republican. Oh, well, yeah. oh yes. 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 Republican, yeah, yeah, right. In Pennsylvania, <laughs> yeah, close exactly. primary state, where, you know, that means absolutely nothing. Um, but on populism... Why is it when you've got something like Brexit in the UK or Javier Millet in Argentina, Georgia Maloney in Italy or Trump in the US, that's populism and it's bad, but when it's <laughs> an Obama phenomenon, mm -hmm. that's not populism. That is just unity and wonderfulness. Why is any sort of centre-right... And populism is just democracy. It's majority rule, isn't it? Yeah, well, in fact, populism now is far right, I assume. Everything's far right <laughs> yeah, in white supremacy right. these days. So, so yeah. I assume they are the same thing. Uh, <laughs> look, I mean, once again, we're suffering from the same, the same question and answer, really, isn't it? This is all what the media uh, want it to be. And, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, one man's uh, freedom fighter is another man's terrorist, isn't it? So, uh, <laughs> you know, it is... It is we, I think the message here is, with the exception of outsiders, because this show does, tells the truth... Uh, it, we have to be very sceptical of what we read in the media. I think that is, that is the bottom line. Put your critical thinking hats on uh, people. Now, just have a listen to Donald Trump speaking the other day about what you've mentioned, the four years, he's got the track record, but what's he offering from day one of a Trump presidency? Have a listen. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children. Thank you. It's true. Save our kids is right. Save our kids is right. And I... You're right. Thank you. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. Not a penny. And I will keep men out of women's sports, if that's okay. Now, Alex, it is so simple. Why is that so hard? Why? Are, I know you're, you know, you're a member of the party and you can't... Why am I not hearing very similar words from Peter Dutton and the senior libs about what they will do? Why is it so hard for Australian Conservatives to confront the culture wars head-on, tackle them head-on, because that's what Australian parents want to hear? Yeah, look, they certainly do. And on this subject of education, my, my view is, and I know this view is shared widely uh, in amongst our ranks, uh, education actually is uh, one of the key battlegrounds in, in this next uh, period. And, and I think there are a load of mums. I talk to mums all the time, specifically mums. And the mums, by the way, are the ones who are getting politically active in this state. 
uh, about their concerns about that very issue. That message is starting to pervade through and the issue of education, not indoctrination, is a, is a massive one for the next election. It's an election-winning strategy, in fact. One thing I will say is I was really pleased to see some of the comments reported today that Peter Dutton made to the Victorian State Council about uh, tackling this issue head on. I, I think I'm, I'm very hopeful we're going to see something about this in the lead up to the election because ultimately the purse strings sit with uh, the Commonwealth on this issue and the national curriculum sits with the Commonwealth on this issue. And this is an issue that we need to be tackling because kids are going to school, they're learning how to be social justice warriors mm -hmm. and by the time we get to, you know, year nine, they can be, some of them can barely count or read. Uh, and this is an issue that Australians are not talking about openly. This is like the voice. It's yep. a sleeper issue, mm. it's a culture war issue. Uh, and I think increasingly conservative politics in this country needs to throw off the shackles of seeing, like populism, the term culture wars as being a pejorative. Politics is downstream from culture. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, Alex, I would argue, and I get the emails, I get messages uh, every week from people who say, I'm a Labor voter, I'm not conservative, but the stuff happening in schools troubles me. My kid was obliged to do mm. an acknowledgement of country before they gave a speech uh, at, at, in primary school or uh, they've come home with uh, information about pronouns and, and been given all sorts of uh, information that is not relevant to, to them and, and should not be in the curriculum. So why can't the Conservatives of this country recognise the opportunity presented, particularly amongst migrant communities who are socially conservative, as well as your old school Labor voters who really do feel abandoned when it comes to these issues by Labor and the Greens? And recognise yeah, well, that I mean, opportunity. I think that message is getting a... Yeah, look, I think, it is, I think it is an entirely important opportunity and I think that message is getting through. Um, of course, one of the difficulties arises with the view that, that uh, this is controlled through state and federal means, but ultimately the funding starts with the Commonwealth Government. The mm. national curriculum mm. is controlled by the Commonwealth Government. So this is a Commonwealth issue and it is an election-winning issue. I absolutely agree with you. And, uh, look, I'm, I'm really hopeful this will be something we'll tackle head-on leading into the next election.